Five, six moment, and that was read out in Judges chapter 5, 6 to 8. When I was reading and praying, Lord, which passage do you want me to share? I was thinking of Deborah. But as I read the songs of Deborah, it became so meaningful. And it says it was so dramatically explained. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were deserted. Can you imagine? And Israel, where Joshua brought the people, they said they could not even carry the grapes. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. But they forgot God. They went into idolatry. They were doing human sacrifice ritual prostitution, and other types of practices. They were one with the people of Canaan. And so, Canaanites. And so what happened? They were defeated. It says, in the days of Shankar, during the days of Jael, the highways were deserted. And the tri travelers walked along the byways. Village life ceased. It ceased in Israel until I, Deborah, arose, arose as a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. There was war at the gates. Not a shield or a spear was seen among the 40,000 in Israel. All the weapons, everything were taken away. It was in a very, very pathetic situation. As the Israelite settled in Israel, uh, in Canaan, in the Promised Land, they strayed away from God. Village life ceased. Can you imagine? It ceased in Israel. Life was very, very hard because the oppressors were very strong. They were only a few thousand, 40,000, and then the enemies, they were four legs in number. The land was plunged into utter disaster, utter darkness. There was confusion. There was political anarchy. Village life ceased. There were no leaders. The people, they were moving here and there in fear. They could not walk into the highways. They had to take small pathway in order to escape. There were bandits all over, extortion all over. I can imagine because those things are happening in our land today. Is it because we are slowly compromising our faith? Anarchy. Another thing is, in verse 8 it says, they chose new gods. They will believe in God. Suddenly when everything is okay, they will again try to choose another religion, apostasy, idolatry. Then we also see that uh, there was kind of despondency, a state of frustration, a state of emotional depression among the people. They did not have a good, strong attitude anymore. They were paralyzed. They were in utter confusion, emotional depression, extreme sadness. Are the congregation that we serve going through emotional stress, emotional depression? Are they going into apostasy? Are they becoming one with other religions saying that it is okay, all gods are same? Isn't there political anarchy in our land also? There is a state of lawlessness. We also see extortion here and there, political disorder. These were the things that the Israelites were facing. Despondency, anarchy, and apostasy. They had chariots. They were in suppression. They were suffering so much. And their suffering brought them to cry out to God. And it was such time that Deborah arose. She was a judge in Israel. People, they came to her for help. They came to her for prayers. They came to her to hear prophecies from her. And this was a gift given to her. She was utilizing her faith. 
in the midst of utter darkness and frustration, where hope against hopelessness, there was still a woman who was standing firm in God. And God spoke to her. God said, I am going to deliver the Israelites. You may be few in number. You are under imprisonment by the Canaanites, but I am going to free you. So she came to Barak and said, Barak, you are an officer, you are a leader. You, are, you don't have to fear, you go. But Barak was scared. If you go, I will go. Deborah said, come on, let's go. Because God has already delivered us. That was the faith that she had. In two occasions, he told Barak, Barak, don't be afraid, go. They are in our hands already. Then when they were starting to go, Barak said, you have to go with me. Deborah said, go. Let's go. Because the Lord has already delivered uh, our enemies into our hands. We are going to conquer them. She was de devoted to God. She has great faith in God. She was not afraid. In the midst where they had only 40,000, they were four legs in number. They didn't have any weapons because all the weapons were seized. They had chariots. They said they have 400 chariots and they had iron weapons in it. But Deborah was not scared. In the midst of crisis, she was not scared. She decided to move ahead. As a leader, she had full confidence in God. We need not fear. In moments of crisis, are you coward? Do you want to hide? Do you want to shy away? In moments of crisis that you come across in your congregation, in your church, or in the society, do you feel scared? We need them. We need to be powerful like Deborah. She had great faith in God. She was powerful in her prayer, in her intercessions. And God spoke to her directly. God can use you as an elder woman in the midst of crisis if you have faith in God. Don't be called down. Don't seek for help here and there from people. Try to pull strings here and there thinking that these people will help you. This is my tribe, this is my clan and they will help me. No. In such times of crisis, seek God and God will help you. He will make your path straight. In times of crisis, we need a leadership who has an unwavering faith in God. And not only that, we need a leadership that has unflinching valor. When Deborah saw that her people were being suppressed by Jabin, that was the king Jabin, and Sisera, who was the army commander, she assumed the role of a military officer, leader. And then she rallied her people and said, come on, let's fight. Don't be afraid. All the leaders who were afraid, they came forward. They came forward to assist her because they saw confidence in Deborah. When they were at the lowest moment of their life, they came to Deborah for prayer. She was there to judge the problems. She was there to make their path straight. She was there to guide them. And so when Deborah advised Barak to gather the people, they were leaders who came happily. They knew they were feeling down, but still, because Deborah was living with unflinching valor, Deborah was not scared. She was confident. That's why they came along. They were so disorganized, in a way, because they didn't have any weapons. They were not of a reputable kind of army. The enemies, they were very strong. These people, the Israelites, they were just watching at the enemies from Mount Tabor. And they saw the enemies, they were well equipped with the chariots. They were well equipped with their iron weapons. And so these people, they were wondering how they are going to defeat these people. 
But Deborah said, they are already in our hands already. They are already defeated. God is going to deliver them into our hands. And true to her words, when they charged towards the enemy, it started raining. God has his own power to do. We don't have to make our own plans, our own shrewdness in order to solve a problem. It started raining so heavily. Maybe there were flash floods because the chariots, it got stuck in the muddy soil and they 